All right. I am officially live and the camera worked this time. I was worried that I was going to have the same issue that I had last time, but it looks like we're we are live. Um, what is that? Oh, I think there we go. Let's see if that works. Yep. Perfect. I'm just going to wait a second until I see a couple of you jump on, grab my notes. It's weird how the um the YouTube camera is like swapped the opposite way. Whenever I use any other camera, it doesn't do that, but I'm pulling up my notes real quick. Hey, hey Bianca. So good to see you. Always like a relief. <laughs> I always feel so safe when you're on. <clears throat> All right. Um, can you hear everything? Okay. Perfect. Thank you so, so, so much. All right. I know we have several people at least popping on. Um, I'm just going to give it a couple seconds. I've noticed on YouTube too, lately on the lives, there's a, like a tiny bit of a lag, which I didn't ever notice before. So we shall see. Um, hey, Lauren. All right. Awesome. Okay. I'm starting to see everyone now. Hey, Stephanie. Good to see you guys. So happy that I'm here, That happy that the camera's working. Um, yeah. Hey, Samantha. Awesome. 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 Hey, Dawn. Hi, Ms. Ra Faso. I don't know how to actually say your name, but hello. I mean, I know that's not your actual name. Um, all right, you guys. So I actually decided to make this live on my public channel and it originally was not going to be but I decided that I was going to put it on my public channel and let it be live for three days because everything that I'm going to share here today is kind of in preference to the mini course that's coming out, the Spell of Astronomical Abundance. And it's related to the video that I did last time when I was live on my public channel. So it's kind of a part two. And so I thought, you know what, I'll just make it live because it goes in. For those of you in the membership, there will be another video in the membership this week. So this isn't considered this week's content, just FYI. And I will be looking at my phone because I have notes here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to just make sure I'm on the right page here. All right. Okay. So let's take a couple deep breaths and get started. And I will sort of give you a little outline of how today hour is going to go. And, um, and then I'll also at the end, let you know how you can be involved in the mini course if you want to be involved in it, and also how you can get a discount as well. So let's take a let's just take a couple deep breaths together. And if it helps put your hand on your heart, if you can where you are. And I always tell everybody, if you're unengaged, or if your energy is weird, or whatever, it's okay to just get off and come back because everybody here is very sensitive, especially me. And so we all feel it. And it's just I, I totally believe that it's better to just pop off than to stay on and and project or feel weird. So if you need to pop off, that's fine. You can always come back on when you need to. And let's just take a couple deep breaths. And just center right in your heart. Imagine that you become like a genie and your whole body goes into your heart like a lamp. So your heart is all around you 360. You project the energy of your heart around you. And remember that this is your sovereign space that you have authority here, that your will matters, what you will, will be done, and that your focus directs it. So just notice if there's any anywhere that you need to shift your energy or shift your attention, or just if you need to breathe into some part of your body and give it life. And pay particular attention to your back side. This is your receiving side. See if you need to put a light there or a color or just surround yourself with a color or a symbol or something that signifies to you that this is your sovereign space. And to be mindful of how you are contributing to this conversation 
So even though you're not talking to me with words, you're talking to me energetically and you're talking to everyone in this space. So just take a second and think about what you want to contribute, what your energy signature is for this communion. All right. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, you can just come back to me. Also, feel free to lay down if you want and listen to this with your eyes closed because sometimes the transmissions come through like that, although I never quite know how anything's going to be delivered. So we'll just see how spirit wants to show up. Um, all right. So last week, if you guys, I think it was last week, if you guys watched the live that I did on my public channel about personal currency, I talked about how when our hearts are broken and fractured, that's how our currency gets drained. And often our trauma is where bits of our psychic energy, which is connected to our hearts because the heart is the storyteller, the bits of our psychic energy and our heart gets trapped in these trauma spaces. So when I say grid space, I'm talking about a belief a, a, a space that is held together through belief and continual sacrifice to that belief. So if we have had an experience that taught us that we have to prove that we have worth and, and we believe it, and not just we think it, but we believe it because of an experience that we've had, those beliefs are automatic and they create the foundation of our reality. And when, how I see grid spaces is where we participate energetically in beliefs. So there's we can have different beliefs in relation to different things. So different subjects, different people, different topics can trigger different grid spaces for us. And we're actually shifting all the time. This isn't a stagnant thing. It's part of time. It's connected to timelines. But I believe that overall grid spaces are created through our foundational experiences. So the, the experiences typically that we had when we we're very young or the experiences that sh profoundly shaped us, us, and that can be at any time in life, but the kind of experiences that alter our perception of reality. Usually we all have something like that, and it doesn't necessarily have to be traumatic either. It can be an in incredibly profound experience. Uh, spiritual experience, but those kind of experiences that shape our belief, shape our reality, those usually determine where we are primarily, what like overarching grid space that we participate in with our energy. And I believe that those overarching grid spaces are where we are part of the alchemy that's taking place on this planet. It's And the alchemy has to do with transmuting the trauma of lack transmuting all the beliefs that were created from lack and created from the experience of feeling separate and not enough. So <clears throat> people in our grid spaces, some people are there because they had experiences of, of such profound joy, for example, that their, their energy is helping to stabilize the belief that the counter belief of whatever that grid space is holding. So again, if we use the example of the foundational belief that we have to prove that we have worth, <clears throat> a lot of grit, a lot of um, principalities that share in this overarching grid on this planet are places like institutions like religion, or um, even sports, like places where we typically suffer from this perfectionistic idea that we have to be perfect and that we're more worthy if we do it right or better. And because we're more worthy, <clears throat> we should have more. But if we're less worthy, we should have less. This, these hierarchical systems that our ego gets extremely addicted to, by the way. <clears throat> and I'm using this one as an example because it's such a big one on the planet, the perfectionist grid. I'm going to grab my water. <clears throat> so... I want you to understand these grid spaces because to really understand our personal currency and how it works and how to invest it and how to save it, like give back to us and um, just what we do with it, 
we need to understand the space that we're primarily doing alchemy. And I'm talking about the psychic space, because again, all of this is sort of the subconscious mind. And you can think of the collective as almost like a huge supercomputer. And all of our experiences are connected in, an, in, an, in a web to with each other and with the overall reality that we're experiencing. <clears throat> and we reinforce that reality over and over through our focus, through our words, through our through our um, actions. And we hold each other accountable to those beliefs as well. And those of you you have been following me for a long time know I've been talking about this quite a bit, that we, when we reinforce things like fear, guilt, and shame, we, we don't realize how much we are actually subconsciously in the subconscious mind reinforcing that for everyone around us. So if we have a deep foundational belief in perfectionism or that we have to prove that we have worth in order to receive, there's, there's lots of different ways that that plays out. And so there's all these niches within that overarching grid. But the overarching grid here, whether you're still stuck in perfectionism or whether you freed yourself from it and therefore you're you're actually moving a ton of energy through your auric field and it's shaking the principalities of that overall grid, no matter where you are, you're affecting everybody else in that grid. And so we often tend to think of ourselves as just these <clears throat> individual, like, spaces where we don't, what we think and what we feel, even especially what we're not saying out loud, that it just doesn't affect anybody. Or if we sit behind our computers and we just, you know, talk about all the things we're for and against, that that's somehow going to make a huge difference. But actually what truly shifts our reality is our resonance, what we are being, because that truly has an influence on the psychic grid. And in, in these subtle ways, we reinforce, either we lock down deeper into the beliefs of lack, or we start liberating ourselves from those beliefs. And as we do that, as we pull ourselves out, again, we pull our currency out of those foundational beliefs and we weaken those principalities. That's just how it works. Principalities in and of themselves have no power. They are held up by people who believe in them. So people who reinforce the belief. And that's why when we set ourselves free, we also are a part of setting others free because we no longer invest our currency in that grid space. <clears throat> so grid space is in really important. I've been talking about grid space on and off, and I have a whole video on grid space, and, and I'm pretty sure it's on my public channel. I might have moved it to my membership, but my lower tier membership by the way, which is like $4.99 a month, has all of my videos that I've archived from like the last five years. And eventually all of my videos will be on there. Um, my whole channel is changing. So just FYI, I've kind of been slowly taking all my archived videos out, but there's like a plethora of content in my first tier. Um, but anyway, so if, if you don't see the grid work, if you type in Amanda Flaker grid work, it should come up. And um, if it doesn't, it's in my membership. It might come up even if it's in the membership. I don't know how YouTube does it. And if, if you click on it, it will say it's locked and it's part of the membership, but I'm just not sure. So <clears throat> anyway, that's a whole side note. But I the, the grid work overall is, I think, one of the things that's the most overlooked. I mean, people talk about grid work, but in terms of personal currency, and especially when we're talking about um, impact entrepreneurs or healers and people who are who who use their gifts and their talents, their spiritual gifts and their talents in a monetary way, which is is a lot of people and it's a big space. This is the this is the grid that needs to understand grid work and how it works because we've in the past typically believed that oh we just have to serve. And so we think if we give, again, it sometimes can, in this weird backwards way, support lack. We think if we give and give and give and give, then we'll be worthy to receive. Or if we do the right thing, we'll be worthy to receive. Or if we're God's instrument or the universe's instrument or whatever, if we're do the if we are, if we're good or if we're changing things in politics, if we're fighting the system, that means we're good and that means we will receive in the end or we will win. However, whatever that looks like for us, we will win. One of the a big phrase that's going on right now, I see over and over online is like, oh, well, these people are going to be on the wrong side of history and these people are going to be on the right side of history. Not even realizing that, that that is literally fundamentally systemically rooted in lack. That whole idea that 
there's going to be a winner and someone has to win and someone has to lose and that someone's right and someone's wrong. It's rooted in that polarity. And that's part of what we are overall alchemicalizing on the planet. So we have to understand what grid space am I primarily working on? And one of the ways to know that is just to look at your life and look at your life's experience and ask yourself, what are the primary beliefs that I have been transmuting and overcoming in this lifetime? What are the what are the beliefs that have profoundly shaped me specifically and especially the beliefs in lack? But some people also have had profound beliefs in abundance that they're just meant to be in that abundant grid and hold it down. There are people who were raised in very secure, loving homes that really learned boundaries and learned how to invest their energy and, and sort of were imprinted with a code of abundance. And for those people, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're transmuting negative beliefs, but what they're doing is resonating out the belief that there's enough and that I'm enough and that we were loved and that our needs can be met. And so it's important that they continue to onk that belief. So that resonance gets more and more powerful because then they reinforce that belief and their influence is stronger. So imagine if we had nobody on the planet that truly understood love or connection or worthiness, I think we would be doomed because we wouldn't even know we wouldn't have any difference. And I think there's this interesting thing going on in the grid where we want to identify as the victim. I'm talking about collective because there's this idea that if you're the victim, then you're you're off the hook and everyone else is responsible. But if you're the victim, you're off the hook. And obviously, anyone who's been victimized, it's not their fault for whatever happened to them specifically. But in the overall grid, there's this um, scapegoating of victimhood as uh, to escape accountability for our lives and an accountability for how we are being and what we are investing in. So there's just this huge, huge shakeup here. And I feel like I've said it over and over, but it's so important that we unplug our focus from the collective and especially the collective war, because it can make us feel like we're doing something and there's so much injustice on the planet that we have to do something. And I'm not saying not do anything, but what I am saying is unplug from the idea of this. There's a winner and a loser. There's a, there's a victim, there's an aggressor and there's a savior. Cause remember that's all part of the mimic program and mimic is where our currency gets trapped and it depletes us because we are creative in nature and we are meant to create uniquely through our unique experiences, which again is why our life story matters, why our personal story, no matter what it is, no matter how horrific or sad or seeming like a failure your life is, or I, the, our personal stories is where all of our power and all of our currency is. And it begins by accepting who we are all the way. <clears throat> not just by labels, but by our really unique experiences. And that's why if you pay attention, when you get too plugged into the collective, individual and individual experience and individual perspective ends up sort of getting whitewashed. It gets, it just sort of gets um, muted because these strong principalities of, of right and wrong and lack and abundance and victim, aggressor, savior, they all come in so strongly. And again, remember those beliefs, those, those foundational principalities are so powerful on this planet because this planet has been ruled by lack for thousands of years, lack and war. So when, when we get into that mindset, we don't even realize it. It's so familiar to us. It's so historical to the human story. And that's why it's part of mimic because we're just mimicking the same dynamics over it. Yes, the victim, aggressor and savior change. The roles change. And that's I've said it over and over, but that's all that's actually happening when power shifts hands. It's just that now this guy's the villain, this guy's the savior and these guys are the victims. And when we when we lock into that story, then we're like, oh, OK, and we treat everyone accordingly and we just go right back into mimic and we go right back into reinforcing the victim aggressor savior paradigm and the idea overall, the foundational belief that there's not enough. And so something has to be sacrificed or you have to prove you're worthy in order to receive because not everybody can receive. That's the foundational belief in lack. And that's why we have that victim aggressor savior paradigm set up. Now, it's important to understand that this victim aggressor savior paradigm is not only held together by the belief in lack, but it's relational. 
And remember, I talked about it in the last live about our heart being where all currency comes from, where all our currency, which is our true inheritance, which is our wealth, is it comes from the heart. It doesn't come from something outside of us. It comes from the heart. Again, your experience from the inside out is where all of your power is. It's not the outside in. You're not just a pawn in the universe's overall war game and who, who's, what side of history these principalities are going to be on. We can easily get played as pawns in that game, and we do all the time, and particularly empaths get sucked into that game because the trigger for empaths is injustice. And so <laughs> when we feel injustice, that's when we feel like we finally will take action because usually empaths won't allow themselves to have a preference until they... Um, it won't allow themselves to have a preference until they hit that place of injustice, or they won't allow themselves to truly have a will or take action or take a stance or create a boundary until they've hit that place of no, this is unjust. And that's usually when an empath will wake up. Thank you so much for the donation, by the way. Um, and hello, everybody new who stepped on. I love it. So so anyway, there's this overall thing that we need to understand is that our our personal currency gets sucked into these principalities. And by the way, when we get sucked in, it change it they give us those principalities give us our identity. They tell us how we should be. And then we adjust ourselves accordingly and we hide the parts of ourselves that we think are unacceptable and we emphasize the things that are acceptable because we we need to receive and we need to be enough. And so again, it just creates this game of mimic. And really, at a core, in a resonance sense, it's inauthentic. So it's it that that's why it creates such a powerful delusion because it's inauthentic. And when and authenticity is the currency of heaven on earth. It's the currency of everything because the truth sets us free. It sets us free from lack when we can truly anchor into the truth, which the truth is in our resonance. The truth is in how we truly feel, even if it's unacceptable. That's the truth or what we truly believe, even if it's a belief that isn't serving us, or even if it's a belief that's offensive to somebody else, or even if it's a belief that needs to be transmuted, that's still the truth. And if we deny that authentic truth, we're missing the mark. We're missing like, we're not, we're not set right where we need to be in order to receive. And that's usually why we don't receive because we're not authentic. And so first and foremost, authenticity is the currency of heaven on earth. And when we, when we anchor into our heart and our heart's a part of this, and we anchor into how we authentically feel, even if it's unacceptable, even if it's jealous, even if it's, again, emotions or things that we, we say are wrong or bad to feel, which is how currency gets stuck because there's not one emotion that is wrong. And there's not one emotion that is bad. Emotions can make us feel bad because they can activate beliefs in lack. But the emotion itself is just the messenger saying, hey, this is what you believe. This is why you feel this way, because you believe this. So it gives you an opportunity to address the belief that is causing the feeling of lack. And belief is where it's at. Everything has to be shifted on a belief level. So that's why I think the understanding of true currency is missed for so many of us because we are so disillusioned by lack and we have to have money and we have to survive. And that system has been steeped in the belief of lack and hierarchy for thousands of years. And so we, we just, it's automatic. It's automatic. So going back to alchemy in the grid spaces that we're working with, transmutation, that we're alchemicalizing these beliefs. And so much of the original trauma that caused these beliefs in the first place have been coming to the surface to be healed. And it, they've been coming up forever. But 2020 opened it up big time. 2020 opened a portal, I believe, that gives that's giving humanity an opportunity to choose a different timeline. Because we are being able to see everything things that we couldn't see before things that were hidden we're getting to un we're getting to understand who the villain is that we've been told who the villain is and who the victim is and we've been really getting to see we've had an opportunity especially anyone who's had access to the internet which if you're here you do um we have the privilege of being able to quickly see through the delusion 
And what we do with that information determines what timeline we will line up to. And every single one of us will line up to the timeline that's meant for us, the timeline that we're a match to, that we're that we're just still there. So we need to learn from that. And it's also why we don't have to worry about what anybody else chooses. Because if you choose to um, invest in with your personal currency, the belief that there's enough and that we're enough and that there's any anything is possible and that you have every, like you have everything available to you and that your point of attraction sets what co- what's coming and you don't have to make it happen it comes to you faith matters here if you choose to invest in those beliefs you will line up to a reality that confirms it over and over whereas the person right next to you may still have deep wounds and they're just not there yet. So they, they will manifest a reality that reinforces to them what they truly believe. So they can see, we all have to get to the point where we see our true foundational beliefs. So we understand the principalities that we are serving so that we have a, get an opportunity to have a conscious choice and say, do I want to continue participating this or not? And yes, it might be hard to get out of because we are habitually in there. We're in mimic. Our body has memorized the patterns through our breathing, through how we hold ourselves, through how we talk, through how we communicate online. Everything is so programmed into us. So it to choose to invest our personal currency in abundance is a process because pulling our psychic tentacles out of lack It takes some time. And just like any new habit, when we are building a new habit, it takes persistency, persistency, it takes persistence and consistency. And that is just, it's just the name of the game. And it's uncomfortable when we first start doing it. But the more that we invest, the more that we take action on the belief that there's enough, the more that we um, just reinforce it to ourselves that there is enough, even if I don't understand where it's coming from or how it's going to come to me or that my needs can be met, that I'm worthy of my needs being met, even if I don't know how, the more that we act in faith in that way, the more our reality shifts. And eventually, just like it did in lack, it will become second nature to us. And that's why eventually the people who invest in the principalities of abundance will tip the scale. And eventually it will, the predominant resonance will be there's enough and that's heaven on earth. There's enough heaven on earth. So still in the physical body. And it's important that we understand that because the physical vessel is the, is the inheritance. And if we are eternal and we invest in that eternalness, maybe we're not going to, some people won't invest in that, in this body, but some will, some will actually in this physical vessel on this planet earth in this time, activate as a dominant belief that there is enough. I am enough. We are enough. And in that belief, we release permission for lack to continue to have power and power over us and influence in our lives. And I've said it a million times, but ultimately I see it as demons and people like I say that word intentionally because there's so much charge around it. And it's used in warfare, but demons meaning like beliefs that have just been fed over and over and over and over that they're just, they're automatic, but they don't have any life force of, of their own. They're, they're our creation and they do, they do have power because we're feeding them. We feed the demons with our focus, with our action, with our, with our just continual faith in the belief that there's not enough, our, our continual insistence in the belief that there's not enough. So we do, we are influenced again by principalities, by spiritual authorities that we have that not just us, but humans for centuries have given power to. So there are very powerful principalities and gods on this planet that, and demons and whatever you want to call them that influence us. And so a big part of getting ourselves free, I I said this in the last video, but is restoring our hearts. Our hearts need to be fully restored. And to be fully restored, the heart in and of itself knows that there's enough because the heart is eternal. It just is. All life force comes from the heart. It's the wellspring of life. So the heart knows. The heart is the aspect of us that is connected to our eternal nature. And when we're connected to our eternal nature, we know (laughs) it's eternal. So we may, we may learn our, we're choosing to learn so many different things and tell so many different stories through our creative nature, but it's eternal. So it never actually is going to run out. It will change forms though. 
So anyway, this is a really like kind of the more existential way of looking at this, but I wanted to start here because it's all foundational in our beliefs and in our story. And that is played out through our relationships. Every relationship will reflect back to you what your true beliefs are. And when we're doing this kind of alchemy, this kind of transmutation on the planet, we're actually relationally restoring ourselves to love. And so relationship does matter. But primarily, first and foremost, it's our relationship to our own self, our own power within us which is beyond the self of like your ego. When I say my own self, I don't just mean Amanda. I mean the power that's coming through me, the source that's coming through me, being restored to that from here out. And then remember, if we're focused here, it, because it's our most, um, this physical vessel and this body that we opted into is our most direct connection to God. It's not something out there and it's not about disconnecting from the body. This is our most direct access to power, to um abundance and to source itself. So we have, if we know ourselves through that source that's coming through us, it's much different than knowing ourselves through what the world tells us to be or what the systems tells us, tells us to be, or tells us who we are based on our socioeconomic status or our educational status or whatever our culture dictates to us. So this is where the shift is taking place and you can see it so like not just see it, but feel it so powerfully on the planet right now as the war amps up. I truly feel like there has been a shift. And in the beginning of 2020, it was like all the rage was coming up. So much trauma from the past was triggered, huge, massive fault lines and fault lines and grid spaces are connected, but they are a little bit different. I, I feel like spirit wants to download something so huge about that, but they're, they're connected to the web interface of all of our psychic energy. And as we relate to each other and relate through these experiences and through these stories and through our personal identities, that web of creation sort of influences and informs everybody. So fault lines are, are connected to the big, spaces where there's been massive earthquakes on the planet, so to speak, literally and psychically. Psychically are where earthquakes have taken place where we have damaged our relationship or sh um, shaken up our relationship with God or with, with source or with each other, with life itself. And so it's where all the trauma places have been. And there's lots of different fault lines. So you can say like in each different war has its own fault line and that whole grid that gets triggered, different races, different histories. We all have our own different fault lines where our trauma lies and, and it connects us psychically through our identity. And there's a reason why we manifested exactly in the bodies we're in, the color of skin we have, Everything about us, everything about how we manifested here is connected to, I believe, spirit's urge to transmute the trauma. And so you represent a specific grid space. Now, you may not um, connect to the overall fault line of, let's say, your race, for example, or the history of your people. You may feel it, but that may not in this life be where you have been where the grid space you're working in, but you still have a psychic connection to that grid. So when you shift, you powerfully influence everyone else in that grid because just simply by the indicators that you give. And especially because if you want to talk about race and race has been so big on the scene since 20, well, I mean, it's always been big on the scene, but we've, we've put an emphasis on it in social media and collectively in terms of talking about it um, since 2020, big time. And there's, as you, if you, if you've paid attention at all, there's so many different perspectives about it. It's not like there's just one belief about it. There's so many different and how powerful it is when, when there's anomaly within the mimic narratives. So there's, and that anomaly takes place because our individual experiences are unique. And this is again, coming back to why it matters. We're not just all the same, just because I'm white doesn't mean like I'm like every white person on the planet. And obviously everyone knows that, but I'm just using it as an example because we can tend to use indicators, especially physical indicators 
as having way more significance and importance than it may, than it may even have to the individual's personal experience. And when we when we do that, these again, these principalities start coming in strong and they want us all to see each other through these like really straightforward labels. This is one of the ways that um, the, war gets triggered on the planet. Identity matters really powerfully when it comes to war because we have to clearly identify who the enemy is and who the victim is. And if we can do it through something as arbitrary as skin color, for example, that's an easy way to ramp up the war. It's just really easy because it's instant. Like you don't even have to know anything about anybody, but if their if their skin tone reflects something to you specifically, it'll trigger a whole fault line, especially if you've been um, really deeply wrapped into the indoctrination around whatever that that particular war mentality is. And, and it's for every race, it's for every subject, it's for every, every indicator that we have has its own, um, just the very identity trigger itself can, has the potential to trigger war. And it also has the potential to trigger anomaly. So this is directly connected to how our personal currency works because all of our power is in our resonance and how what we're doing in our resonance and understanding that we are powerful and that we influence people, every single one of us. It's not like only some of us have an influence. Everybody has an influence. Even if our influence is deeply psychic. And one thing I've realized is that usually the people who feel the most powerless on this planet have the most pull when it comes to the psychic influence because the people who feel the most victimized are usually the ones who psychically because they're they're held back so powerfully in the 3d world that psychically have like how do I even want to I was gonna say no bounds but I don't know if that's the best way to describe it we take up a lot of space I'll put it that way so um which is you we're way more, our energy signature is way more powerful than we realize especially if we've identified primarily as a victim. And I know that for me personally, like for most of my life, especially after my mom died, I, and my mom died when I was 12, I felt like such a victim. And I truly, I really did feel like everyone else like had a better life than me and everyone else was happier and everyone else like was blessed and I wasn't. And not just because of my mom died, there was so many other things, but that was like the cherry on the cake for me. And, and it just solidified this belief that for whatever reason, I don't get, I don't get what other people, I don't, I don't get like a, I don't get to be safe or I don't get to be stable. Or I don't get to love something and have it stay or whatever. It powerfully shaped my identity and I look back now and realize how much of a magnetic pull that whole belief had that as an identity and everything, even I would draw people to me, empaths who, who felt like they needed to love me and heal me out of that. And I can see even looking back how much my energy pulled just so, and not that that's wrong. It's not wrong in any way, but I'm trying to say I was powerful. I had such a powerful influence on people and I powerfully triggered people in one way or another, but I, I felt so powerless. And I feel like that's what what's going on on the planet right now is that people who feel the most powerless are from a psychic influence level, some of the most powerful players on the grid right now. And usually it's the victim subconsciously that is also steeped in shadow contracts. And so they're trying to get their needs met, but they don't know how to get them met directly. And so they get them met indirectly, which is why they're often very powerful in the shadows. And they don't even realize it sometimes because they're it, the whole feel, fear, guilt, and shame thing is going. And that's why we feel collectively like if we're the victim, then we're owed and we're allowed to demand things from people or we're allowed to, um, we're allowed to also not like, I know for me again, I, I'm just going to speak from my experience, but I felt like I had nothing to give. And so often I really did have a lot to give, but I wouldn't give even where I could give because I didn't know that I had something to give. Again, this is just like something growing up has taught me. And as I've healed and realized I had I have way more power and way more to give and way more influence, all of those things than I ever even realized. And once you know that and start utilizing it, it really is part of that last bit of like push to instigate the transmutation of that belief. And once you've overcome the belief, the belief really has no power 
over you anymore. And that's when you anchor in a, a powerful principality and you start becoming very influential. Again, psychically first and foremost, because your resonance is the primary influence. Less, Even less than what you say. What you say is a part of your resonance. But even if you're not speaking, if you are in your resonance field, carrying the belief that there's enough, you're enough, we're enough, that there's an infinite amount of solutions, that we are transmuting these beliefs of lack, that we're in this together, that we're all connected. Um, it's, it's a whole different influence that you have psychically than the person who's believing I'm a victim. I, I don't have power. I can't do anything to change this. Um, it's, it's, it's a very different influence, but but it's also very, both of them are very powerful. And it's part of what kind of causes this polarity, by the way, too. And I think this is why people talk about spiritual warfare and that the, it, the actual, the battle is in the mind. It starts there. It starts psychically. So when we're talking about personal currency, that's, I believe we have to go foundational all the way, like that, that our inheritance has nothing to do with the currency on this planet. And, and the currency on this planet will reflect the way that how we are experiencing the currency on this planet, money, will reflect the way we are using our personal currency. So even if you don't understand how the money game works or how money works at all, if you can master your currency, money will start coming to you or abundance in multiple different forms will begin showing up in all sorts of different ways that you didn't even plan on. You didn't have to work for, you didn't have to prove anything for, and you didn't have to sacrifice for. There are so many channels of abundance that want to come in for people right now, but we have them totally shut off. We don't even have the, our receptors on to receive because we're so focused on these channels, these channels that we believe we have to get money through or abundance through or get our needs met through. And we often believe that there's no other way to get our needs met aside from these ways. And so we're so focused here. And our belief is only this. And psychically, what we're a match to reflects our beliefs. And so if we're believing this is the only way, we close off our receptors to receive in all these other ways that the universe wants to give to us. Because it's abundant in nature. So I, I feel like I'm even seeing right now, like there's this, you know how the brain can change. Like when we, when we change our beliefs, our neural pathways start to change because we're no longer firing certain um, neurons that, that are connected to different systems in our body that trigger a whole line of things. So when we stop feeding certain beliefs, we literally stop feeding that whole chemical reaction in the body to those beliefs. And we those neuro those neurons eventually break off and die. That's what's happening in the astral realms. A lot of times the way spirit shows me the astrals is like a huge supercomputer. And it's, this is the multidimensional internet that I talk about all the time, but it's where all of our brain waves, I'm going to put it that way. It's very simple, but I'm just going to say it that way, are ultimately connected in an interdimensional web of consciousness. And like I said, right now, there's so much anomaly taking place, especially since 2020, so much anomaly. It's insane. Um, and it still blows me away that we brought through anomaly and I did that anomaly course literally right before 2020 and then 2020 popped in and I was activating anomalies in my life. And then like the biggest anomaly on the planet came. I still am just so blown away how spirit did that. But nonetheless, um, all these anomalies are taking place, which is changing the neural network of humanity. Like neurons are breaking off and starving because we're no longer feeding them and new alliances are being formed. So it's opening up all these new pathways. But what happens in 3D, because 3D is like in the material world, it shows up last there. That's like the very, very last place. It's old news. It's actually history. Like this, this moment is history already, you know, <laughs> like when it finally comes into 3D, it's actually history. But we look at what's happening now as if it's like the, the current cutting edge thing that's happening, but it's actually happened already in the past. Like it, because it, it could only happen by people first envisioning that it could happen and then acting on it and then speaking on it. And then, and then it starts gearing momentum and having influence. And eventually it shows up in 3d. 
So we interpret, we often look at, especially when things heat up and we're like, oh no, times are so bad. What happened? Let's go back to the good old days or whatever. A time when we felt safe, when things didn't feel so confusing to us. But what we don't realize is that the reason why all this is coming up is because as these principalities are losing power, because so many people are no longer feeding these belief systems, or at least they're starting to create anomaly in their patterning and feeding it less and less, and therefore pulling their currency back into their own selves, these principalities are holding on even tighter. They double down. And it's why you'll see it looks as if people are going backwards or or that like things that seemed like they weren't a big deal anymore are coming up to the surface. One example is cults. If you if you pay attention at all to or if you're if you work in a grid space where you've come out of cult or cult energy or that space at all. And again, not just religious, this can be political, this can be um, cultural. Um, But nonetheless, these cults are on the rise. Like, I think there's some medieval shit that we're going to see happening in the next few years. I said this in my last podcast, if you didn't listen to it, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm forgetting what it's called at the moment. But if you go to Spotify or Apple's or whatever, you can you can find it. But um, I talked about how in this in this, um, I, I totally lost my thought. Hold on a second. I said, thank you so much for the $2. I really appreciate you so much. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Okay. Sorry. Let me go back to the podcast. What was I saying in the podcast about, I lost, I totally lost that train of thought. I'll just keep going and it'll come back when it's meant to. Um, but these principalities, th- these principalities that are doubling down. Oh, now that that's reminded me of what I said that th- the, cult grid, like specifically, and you can see it online if you even look right now, the new age slash paganism slash witchcraft side and the Christian like or or fundamental beliefs that can be any of the main religions are doubling down and getting stronger. They're main principalities of it. And simultaneously, there's all this anomaly happening when, within all those grid spaces. So you see people who were really strong in something and they're just opening up, they're, they're shifting, they're, they're, they're getting new perspectives, they're just growing. And then you see other people closing up, closing down and anchoring down and doubling down on the, the principalities of the war. And they and often don't even realize they're doing it. And it comes from fear. It comes from not feeling safe. And it just means that they're not, that's where they're at. And that's the level that they're learning from. But there's all this anomaly taking place, but also it's looking like these grids are getting stronger. Simultaneously, they're losing a lot of power. And that's why we're feeling the grip. And so we can't let that fear monger us into going backwards. Like that's uh, something that I see. And I I feel like it's really interesting. Like we shouldn't be afraid to move past the boundaries that we've been in. There's nothing to go back to because the past has been seeped in mimic. There's nothing to go back to. There are foundation, foundational principles that have been taught on this planet for thousands of years that are part of moving forward because they're the seeds that were planted years, thousands of years ago that have finally, like they're bearing fruit now. And it's taken a long time because we're talking about thousands and thousands of years of history of war and sacrifice on this planet. So we're starting to see those fruits finally. Uh, But it doesn't mean that the way that these systems have played out, that we need to go back and mimic what they've done. We need an anomaly. We know the war doesn't work. We know that. Like there's, it's just kind of nonsensical at this point to fall for it anymore, especially if we have the opportunity to be exposed to as much information as we've been exposed to. So man, it's just like, it's so, so, so big. So our personal currency is really getting, we're, we're calling it back and we call it back through dissolving shadow contracts with lack, dissolving these contracts we have with these principalities that says, okay, I'll reinforce this belief over and over and over again for this need to be met. And we do it because because we believe that that's the only way to get the need met. But by this need being met, another need goes unmet. That's what sacrifice does because we have to sacrifice in that paradigm. And so there's always perpetual lack. So one thing will get fixed and another problem happens. And that's why we have to have conscious, creative contracts. 
And this is also connected to our personal currency. So as we begin to call our currency back to us by dissolving shadow contracts and getting our creative energy out of mimic, which means out of war, then we can begin to creatively move towards our destiny and we can invest in heaven on earth. And heaven on earth is invested in not for other people, it's for you because you're on earth. Your body is the technology to anchor in heaven on earth. And so heaven on earth is connected to secure attachment, feeling safe on this planet, feeling that connection to God or source, feeling from the inside out, not believing that the power is outside of us, even though there is power outside of us that does influence us. It's not one or the other, but Our power comes from within us. And that's the only power that we actually have. We don't truly have power to control the external unless we do it through manipulation. And that's why the mimic program continues and continues. And we justify it because we truly believe collectively when we're in lack that the only way to change things is through force and through manipulation. That's the only way we believe. So This is the like the overall arching theme of what's happening on this planet right now, I believe, and how this connects to empaths and entrepreneurs and creatives and people who are highly sensitive is that I believe that the more aware we become of how our creative energy is being spent. Now, remember, you have a powerful reach, especially if you feel deeply, the deeper you can feel and the more highly um, activated your senses are the stronger your reach. And so that's why highly sensitive people and empaths often don't realize how powerful they are because they're so sensitive and they feel unsafe. So they're always trying to mitigate and look for like, uh, it's like, I, I call it being psychically preemptive, where we're always trying to look for the danger and then prevent it or hide from it or run from it or fix it or solve it. But it's the danger that's always the impetus for our movement. And when we transmute that and and go back into the center of the heart to start restoring our relationship to life and to each other, we're anchored in safety. It's secure attachment. We're anchored in, in stability. We're anchored into the planet, to the planet's resources and to the planet's abundance, which again, look how the planet itself is like the blueprint for abundance. Just think of like, a watermelon seed. It has the the watermelon itself has all these seeds, not just for new watermelons, but for new watermelon plants. I heard someone say this recently and I was like, yes, this is just so true. And so it's like an, it's just an, an infinite amount of abundance that goes on and on and on. That's actually the blueprint of nature. And we destroy that natural abundance through our beliefs that there's not enough, even, even in the way we treat nature. Because if we just look at the systems we've created. And because they're based on lack, the way we rape the resources of the world in or of, of nature itself, of the earth in order to do that. So it, it's just so, we all know it's unbalanced, but we, I think we get stuck in this idea that to fix it, we have to go to war. We have to go to war with this ideology and we have to go to war with these people. And then we have to go to war with our neighbor because they might think differently than us. And it's such a complete waste of energy, not to say constructive um, conversation where you share your diversity of viewpoint and be open and hear different and listen and learn. I'm not just, I'm not saying that is wrong, but that's much different than war. And the way that our political game is played out, it's just been in war. It's just war. It's, it's not about solving problems. It's about creating wars with people who truly want to solve problems. There were you, we, they get used we get used as pawns in these games because we genuinely care. And that's why I truly believe that empaths are the ones that are shifting everything and empaths put in strategic places because empaths hold together the entire grid. Remember, I've talked a lot about how the whole grid is based on the whole grid of lack specifically is based on the empath narcissist dynamic. It's systemic. All systemic isms come from the empath narcissist dynamic. So That's the overall dynamic that we are transmuting on this planet. And it's relational. It's healing our relationship to power and to our own boundaries. And empaths are at the forefront of this because they're in, they hold the system together. They hold, they hold the narcissist up. And that's why we're seeing such a shift in power here. And side note, it's just popping in my head. 
my friend Claudia Catarucci wrote a book called The Impact Leader. And it's if you're interested, if you truly feel like someone that you're in one of those places where you are in a place of authority or power or to shift things, or you know that you're meant to be, read that book because she goes into such depth and detail on um, that process for us, what it looks like to be a leader instead of feeling powerless as an empath. Um, and it's a best-selling book right now on Amazon in three different categories. So I'm super excited for her, but she's a badass. And a lot of her stuff was inspired by me too, which I just think is so awesome in the sense of she, she's anchored in this, this whole understanding of heaven on earth and the abundance matrix and getting out of lack and mimic particularly empaths. So Anyway, that's just a side note, but I feel like I'm getting close to the time and I want to, I want to just make sure I anchor in this understanding here is that managing our personal energy is where our abundance lies and, and living and being anchored in us, our technology, our technology, our story is more important than anyone else's story. And it's, it's important to know that for us anyway, I'm not saying it's more important for the world. I'm saying for us and to know how to manage our energy, we have to know our story, our heritage, our spiritual lineage, our, 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 what's been passed down to us, the, the beliefs that we are transmuting, that we chose to transmute by being here. And part of knowing that is knowing the fault line that you've been, that you were born into. For me, I feel like I was literally born in the middle of the religious war. Like there's always been a war over who's right, who's wrong in my reality, in my life. And that has shaped my life. Religion shaped my life. Um, doctrine shaped my life. The This whole war over who's right and who's wrong shaped my life. Even my mom's death was used as a pawn in that. Oh, she died because she left Mormonism or whatever. So there's this, there's that's mine. And I don't know what yours is, but once you know what that overall thing is, it matters because it matters that we work through and transmute that whole experience. And if we just ignore what our experiences are, or just put them aside, like they don't matter as much as other people's experiences or other people's trauma, we never will transmute our own beliefs that are anchored in lack. And we will never get our currency free from that lack matrix from that mimic program. And remember, creativity is, is the ticket out. Our unique creativity, which is anchored in authenticity and anchored in our own personal story. So it matters what we do with our energy. And primarily remember that we have this life, which is this currency that we are flowing through us. And if we want to feel abundant, we need to invest it. We need to save some of it always. In other words, not just totally drain ourselves, like save, invest, and give. Those are the principles of abundance. It's true for money and it's true for our personal energy as well. We must reserve part of our energy. We must um, give part of our, not must, but it's, it's a, it's how abundance works. Like we are meant to give and we are also meant to receive. We're, we're meant to invest. So I feel like if, if you are interested in like moving deeper into this, I told you guys in the post about today's live that I am releasing a mini course. I've said it in the last live too. It was supposed to be released on Monday. I just had some tech issues and honestly, I've created all the content, but I have had zero time to work on the tech side of it. And so I decided, I actually just changed my mind about how I was going to release it. And instead of releasing it on Thinkific, Thinkific, I'm going to release it live, like drip feed it basically for the, I think it's going to be about six videos all together. So I'll start dropping them on Monday. The first video will be dropped on Monday. You do have to sign up for the course and everybody I'm giving a discount to everybody who um, is here today and commented, or if you leave a comment afterwards on this video, or if you commented on the last video. So the course is $88, but if you comment, you get it for 55. So it's $33 off. Off. And this is just basically all of my downloads about personal currency, how to invest it, how to save it and how to give and how to give according to our grid space that we're working. And so it gives back to us directly, because if we know the niche we're in, if we know the lane we're in, it's much easier to whittle down our focus instead of just letting everything pull us in every direction, because there's a huge need for empaths right now. There's a need for witness. People need their trauma witnessed. There's a need for um, just witness as a whole over like the injustice, the stories that are going on, because 
there's all this energy that has to be transmuted. So if we just feel like, oh, we have to serve the collective and we get pulled in everyone's trauma, it drains us. But if we can consciously and strategically work in our grid space and with our fault line that gives back to us. It's, it's investing that this is the difference between just draining our energy or spending it and investing it. So we're going to go pretty deep into that. And we'll be working with the heart chakra, the uniqueness chakra and the invincibility chakra. If you want to find out more of those, um, check out the last live I did. It's on my public channel still. And I talk a lot about that, but that's, this is what we're going to be diving into. And it's, it's short, like, an, uh, like I was going to release it all at once and just have all the videos listed. But like I said, I just, the back end of that has just been overwhelming for me right now. I have too much going on, so I'm just not going to worry about it. And it'll just be released through email. Eventually it will be up on Thinkific and anyone who doesn't do it live with me will still be able to get it. Um, but the unique thing about doing it now with me live is that there's that live component to it. So um, I don't know. It's just like you get things more in real time. But I'm super excited about it. Also, just side note, my membership, my YouTube membership in the craft of the impact, the top tier, we're going through the Ace of Wands series. And the Ace of Wands is all about our creative energy as well and really activating that and amplifying it and understanding what it is. So um, and really moving things out of our resonance field that aren't for us. So if you want to join, there's the all the content for Ace of Wands will be up for three more months. So um you can go through it. And yeah, I think it's super powerful and it goes really well with this personal currency. I actually downloaded this whole class, the personal currency class, the spell of astronomical abundance, because of the work I'm doing in Ace of Wands. It came through as one of the spells we did in it. This whole class came forth. So they're, they're very directly connected. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say. I will. Okay. Hold on. There is, I have a landing page for the course, but it's with the discounted price. So I'm pretty sure if anyone here who, any of you that are wanting it, if you commented, just send me an e email and I will send you the landing page to get it at the discounted price. And um, I'm going to type, I, I can type in the chat. I'll type what my email is. My Amanda, my Amanda at amandaflaker.com email is not working and I've had this huge issue with it. So I'm sending a different email. But it's amandalee80 at gmail.com. If you send me an email there, if you want the discounted price for the course, um, just send me an email there and make sure you comment. Just say, I commented on your video, blah, blah, blah. And I will send you the landing page for the discounted price. So, all right, you guys, I love you so much. Thank you so much for showing up. And hopefully I'll see you on Monday. By the way, the first video will drop on Monday for the Spell of Astronomical Abundance course. Um, so I'll see you Monday there if you want to go deeper into activating your personal currency. All right. Bye, guys.